Okay, this is Unit 3, Lecture 7, and we're going to spend this time and then the last lecture talking about sort of the, the tail end of the Civil Rights Movement, some of the things that kind of kind of pared down into what we're going to talk about next, which will be kind of a more modern era in, in Mississippi history, and really and truly a more... Um, a, a less depressing one, a less racially uh, motivated one, and a little bit, a lot more equality there. But it took a little while to get there. Uh, starting with the administration of Governor Paul Johnson, uh, he had been Ross Barnett's lieutenant governor. He had um, helped Barnett block James Meredith from going to Ole Miss. He had been one of the people standing in the door, <clears throat> and he was. Um, he was an open segregationist. However, um, he begins to kind of curtail some of that um, during the, his election run because he's, he's running against a very successful Republican candidate, um, one that gives him a lot of trouble. And so he's, he has to kind of curtail some of his uh, racial ideas uh, because of that. And then in his inaugural address, he, he says something that nobody is expecting. Um, he, he, he starts to kind of set the stage for racial change, uh, for more equality. He says, we are Americans as well as Mississippians. And while I'm governor, hate, prejudice, and ignorance will not lead Mississippi. So, um, you know, the, this is this idea of a moving forward from where we've been. Um, also during this, this time, just to talk about a little bit about the economy. Uh, if you remember BAWI, Balanced Agriculture with Industry, uh, the parameters that were set, when they started that program back in the 30s, uh, in late 30s, early 40s, to where they would say, okay, when we get to these levels, Mississippi will have a balanced economy. Uh, that is a, a, a achieved and fulfilled in 1965 under, under Johnson. Um, so we, we no longer have just an agricultural economy anymore. Um, there are some notable civil rights organizations that, that did operate in Mississippi that are gonna become uh, a big part of <coughs> what happens in, in the latter part of the Civil Rights Movement. You've probably heard of some, all, some or all of these. The NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, um, it it's, goes all the way back to 1909, and they wanted to, uh, they were all about ending segregation, ending discrimination at all levels, um, and so they were there, their, their main objective was to ensure African Americans their constitutional rights. Um, that was their focus, to make sure that African Americans got everything that they were guaranteed as American citizens. Uh, that, that, and that is still the goal of the NAACP. Um, and so what you're gonna see is all these, these groups, while they were all part of the civil rights movement, they, and they were all rowing the same direction, um, they all had a little bit different oar in the water. They all had a little bit different plan and what they were doing. Um, CORE, the Congress on Racial Equality, is one of the early ones with the NAACP. It, it comes about during World War II um, in 1942, and it's very much um, this idea of nonviolence uh, that we first start to see. Um, that They are the ones that start the sit-in movement um, where they go in and just sit and they don't react and they don't respond uh, to point out the, the you know, racist tendencies of, of some of these segregation, segregated places. Um, so they're very much, um, they want to use nonviolence to combat prejudice. Uh, moving forward, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. This is Martin Luther King's organization. This is a group of ministers for the most part. They are the ones that are going to run the Montgomery bus boycott. And then after that, they're gonna coordinate a lot of the protest activities in the South. Pretty much everything that Martin Luther King is, gonna, that is a part of during this time is SCLC, uh, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. So they pretty much adopt the nonviolent motives of uh, CORE and almost really and truly replace CORE uh, as the nonviolent part of the civil rights movement. Uh, SNCC, the S Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, they, they start in 1960. They start out as nonviolent. Um, they are an interracial group. Uh, they, they do a lot of, they are a big part of sit-ins early on. They're part of the freedom rides and things of that nature. Um, but as, 
as the 60s kind of go toward the 70s, they are going to kind of split off from these nonviolent groups. Um, they're going to get some more radicalized leadership, if that's what you want to call it. And they're definitely going to turn more into activism. This is where the idea of uh, black power is going to come out of and, and some of these things that are a little bit more uh, aggressive than nonviolence. So SNCC is, is definitely heading a different direction. And that brings us all to the long, hot summer of 1964. Now, this is probably the darkest year, the darkest summer in Mississippi's history. Um, there was a group, the Council of Federated Organizations, or COFO. Um, basically, they took members of all of those groups we just talked about, and they sent them into Mississippi um, in hopes, really and truly of hopes of, of helping with voter rights, but really just civil rights in general. Um, they would have freedom schools. They would go in and um, and encourage the local African Americans to register to vote, to show up to vote, to exercise their rights to not back down. Basically, their idea was let's not be satisfied with <coughs> the improvements that have been made. Let's continue to grow. Um, they taught people how to register to vote. They taught them how to handle some of those tricky um, type questions that, that um, sometimes the poll people would use to keep black people from voting. Um, and so they had the best of intentions, but most white Mississippians uh, saw this as an invasion. They saw these people as, as outside agitators, as carpet baggers, uh, you know, people that were coming to Mississippi from other places who didn't understand Mississippi, who didn't understand the way things worked, and trying to cause problems. They were trying to cause upheaval. And so obviously you can imagine there's gonna be a lot of violence um, as this summer goes on. Uh, the most famous, if that's the word you wanna use, uh, infamous probably is a better word uh, for this time frame, uh, this summer is the, the, um, the murder of the three civil rights workers. Uh, these guys, now during the summer, before we get to them, it's hard to understand, but, but there were at least three murders. We're going to talk about them. 80 beatings, 35 shootings, over a thousand arrests, 35 church burnings, and 31 other things burned um, in response to this freedom summer. So th this is not something that white Mississippians are going to take lightly. Um, and that brings us to these guys. So they are arrested. They leave Meridian. They, uh, they're on their way from Meridian to Philadelphia. Um, they, they, they leave Meridian. They're stopped along the way. They get arrested. And then they are released late at night. They start, best we can tell, they started back on their way. And um, a group of KKK men uh, stopped them and, uh, and, and attacked them. Uh, they, f we, they find uh, their car burned out. They f eventually, the FBI finds their bodies in a, um, buried in kind of a, a, like, a, like where they're building a dam. So they're, they were hard to find. Uh, comes to find out, they had uh, shot the two uh, white civil rights workers. Um, the other one they had beaten, shot, and set on fire. So, um, yeah, uh, this was tragic. The, um, they arrested a guy named Edgar Ray Killen. However, it's going to be another one of those Byron D. LeBeckwith situations where he's not actually going to get convicted until 2005. Um, I can vividly remember when this guy got convicted. Um, finally, they found some people willing to testify, kind of deathbed testimonies. And um, and so he ends up getting sentenced to 60 years in prison and, and he's died since then in prison. But, uh, but the murder, they, they, it inspired a movie. If you've ever heard of the movie Mississippi Burning, it's about these guys and their situation. So it's, uh, Definitely one of the darker times in Mississippi history.